Welcome to The Philanthropeneur Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd, designed to offer tips, strategies, and insights to empower nonprofits and entrepreneurs with sustainable win-win solutions. The Philanthropeneur Show is sponsored by The Philanthropeneur Foundation, building capacity through education and professional services. Welcome to another great Wednesday morning. This is Dr. Victoria Boyd, president and founder of the Philanthropeneur Foundation and editor of the Philanthropeneur Journal. And as usual, I am so thrilled to bring tips, strategies, and insight for the business and nonprofit sectors. On today's show, we're going to discuss a couple topics that really tap into the concept of being a philanthropeneur, uh, philanthropeneur and, and sort of sets the bar for what you should be doing. Uh, one of the best parts of my work is talking to people that really have a vision. For example, just yesterday, I met with a wonderful woman who had been trying to figure out what to do, and she came into the Henderson Business Resource Center, and I just happened to be there teaching one of my classes, and she rolled, and then, you know, from that point over, she, she was afterwards just said, I'm just so relieved because now I know what to do. So it's just great meeting all of the different people we meet. Um, and also, uh, just as a side note, that what happened this week, I got my note from my lawyer that the Philanthropeneur trademark has officially been giving, given to the Philanthropeneur Foundation. Yay! I don't know if you've heard part of that saga, but a German company, uh, a clothing company, in fact, was trying to trademark the Philanthropeneur and had been following some of our trajectory and what we were doing and actually filed in, in Nevada to, uh, trying to get it. But we persevered and we got it. So that was a great milestone that we had this week. But as I said, a part of uh, my exciting uh, work that I do is getting to meet other visionaries. And I, and I really was excited um, to talk to our guest today who came up with a great concept. And it, it was exciting just to explore, you know, how they want to serve and how they want to have impact and really make the world a better place. Uh, so it, it's almost a double bonus today. We're, we're going to be able to talk about not only his brand new company and the services that he provides, but also some of the um, corporate structures uh, that I've gotten many questions on and the launch process um, and how that happens. And we're going to be talking about what, what is a nonprofit corporate entity versus a benefit corporations. And if you're not familiar with benefit corporations, they were not a legal uh, statute in every state, but in Nevada, back in t 2014, um, that's where our headquarters is, they passed a, through legislation that you could become a benefit corporation. So it's going to be exciting to hear what that really involves, because it is relatively you know, a new concept. Um, but then we're going to learn about a great, and I want to say great, I've been just talking to this, passing out flyers to all the nonprofits that I come into contact with over the last week or so. And it's, a, I mean, literally a great process. And we're going to have Frank Hong. He's the CEO and founder of New World CGI and his journey as a benefit corporation. And we'll bring him on in just a few minutes after we have our first, uh, and I'm always doing this, commercial break. Here we go. Support for the Philanthropeneur Foundation provided by WarriorDesign.net, providing services including graphic design, innovative flyers, responsive websites, video editing, and more. And more. Offering next day services at an affordable rate. For more information, visit us online at WarriorDesign.net. Warrior, 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 WarriorDesign.net. Okay, welcome back, and I'm so excited to introduce Frank Hong, CEO and founder of One World CGI. If you ever get a chance uh, to get in a room with him, hold on your hat because he would just blow you away. So, welcome to the show, Frank. And before we get into our topics, uh, let's uh, our listeners get to know you a little bit better. Your background and and what really gets you excited? 
Sure. Good morning, Dr. Boyd, and thank you for inviting me to speak this morning. I'm honored and thrilled this morning to speak with you and your wonderful audience. Um, well, I'm a native Californian who is, has ended up in Las Vegas, and throughout my life, both personally and professionally, I've always enjoyed doing things that benefit the community, to help out people, uh, that engage in causes that hopefully improve uh, our world. And over the course of uh, my lifetime, uh, I've done a lot of different things, uh, but I ended up now where I've reflected in life and I wanted to do something that can impact society even greater. And that's where I ended up with One World CGI. Uh, my background includes environmental, it includes politics, it includes some development and a lot of other different areas. <laughs> But so far, I have to say, doing uh, this project, uh, One World CGI, it's it's been, it's it's just been totally fun. It's it, it's it's my passion, and and I've just been thrilled to do this. I I can go on constantly telling people about it because it's a issue that not is only my issue, but it's also an issue of others. Which is the mission of One World CGI is to help others, help others build communities, and help others discover what their communities are. Absolutely. It, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that it, it doesn't become work when, you, when it's your passion and you can have fun. Uh, and, and that's critical. I often mention that, you know, if you're just working a job and, and you literally hate getting up every day, you're, you're never going to feel satisfied. <laughs> and until you I, really find that passion point, you're just going to be sort of floating in a cloud going through life. And, you know, and, and I'm so glad because, I mean, what you've created is is well, it touched me because it, it's definitely aligned with what the Philanthropeneur Foundation, but it's about helping others. It's about bringing, and as you said, building that community. And and I, when you first introduced it, I mean, we were met via a, a, another networking contact, but as soon as I saw what you were doing and heard about it, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is something that I really have to get aligned with and, and see how I can help not only build what I'm doing as an organization, but help others through your platform uh, build what they're doing. But as I mentioned before, and, and I'm going to give a disclaimer, in, in, in case you start coughing, I want to make sure that our listeners understand, I have pulled you out of your <laughs> sick bed, and I am so sorry, but hey, we've been waiting a long time for this radio show, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time, especially since you're sick, to, to join us today. So we're going to forgive you if you cough, and if you need to cough, just go ahead and do it, and sip your Thank tea, you and, and do <laughs> whatever you need to do. But as I mentioned, you created your organization not as a nonprofit, but as a benefit corporation. And I get a lot of questions, uh, you know, exactly what is that. And because you have formed your entity under that umbrella, I think it would be interesting to hear your perspective as to why you went that path, how that uh, uh, process might have been different, or what you really had to think about in terms of your board of directors and things like that. Um, but to give a brief explanation, explanation. There's a regular for-profit structure where the board of director, single purpose, and legally is charged to oversee, oversee and ensure that stockholders' interests are protected, and that is the profit, that, or that the company makes profits. However, in a B Corp, the board of directors may have a dual purpose of having community impact, and many people don't understand what that means. So, with your organization, what does that really mean for you uh, with um, One World CGI? Well, Dr. Boy, you gave an excellent explanation. I don't know if I could <laughs> say it any better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, well, prior to actually incorporating, uh, I spent about two years uh, with a couple of other folks really deciding on what One World CGI should be, what it is, what our mission is, what we really wanted to do. Um, I mean, a lot of it, initially, I thought about just creating a nonprofit and, and, and pursuing some of my passions. But at the same time, as I reflected on what I really wanted to do, how I could use my talents to the best, I really wanted to help people in a greater way. And there, then we sort of just came up with the concept of One World CGI in terms of helping others because there's help others because there's so many people that do good already. And I decided to go the route of the public benefit corporation after having looked at nonprofits and corporate structures and corporation structure 
offered the flexibility to carry out the mission of the company. Uh, One World CGI is a public benefit corporation, which is essentially sort of a hybrid between a business and a nonprofit. We operate as a normal business would, but we also have binding social mandates that we must comply with. And not all public benefit corporations are the same. They vary depending on the states, and most states um, follow the B Corp status, which was a, a sort, of, a, sort of like a national standard um, from a, mm-hmm. a NGO group, but uh, each state sort right. of crafted their own after that. And uh, ours, you know, I, I made One World CGI strive for higher standards, and the DNA of our business requires us to do things like reinvest profits into the programs and resources that benefit the members that are part of the One World CGI community. You hit on the you exactly hit on the spot in terms of where uh, social enterprise differs, where uh, a public benefit corporation or a, a corporation normally has to make decisions to that are profit driven in 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 the, in the best interest of their shareholders. Uh, as a public benefit corporation, I can make business decisions that have a social uh, spin to it or a social purpose to it that may not maximize profit but have a social benefit and uh, there are supposedly offer uh, or supposedly shareholder protections uh, for making those decisions and but it's not been proven in court yet but that's one of the <laughs> benefits of being a public benefit corporation that essentially it can allow you to pursue a social mandate and with one world cgi being that our core mission is to help our members, help the nonprofits, the faith base, the community groups, the volunteers, all the different folks, uh, socially responsible businesses, all these different folks that are part of our platform. Uh, I would like to make social decisions that can benefit the community as a whole so that all these folks can do greater good. Right. Absolutely. And and that's a great explanation. And very often some of the, because I teach nonprofit management at UNLV, uh, they ask about, um, can people make donations? And just to clarify, you are an actual for-profit business structure. It's just that you're allowed to have that social impact uh, as a legal um, uh, compliance issue for your board of directors. And so, donations, you you don't accept donations because they're not tax deductible. You don't get what is called a 501c3 tax code exemption. You are a true corporate structure, but you, you can do good for the company. I, and I, 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 get, I love the whole social enterprise, and, and it's a lot of what I try to even teach some of the nonprofits, that even though you're a nonprofit, you have to think like an entrepreneur and, and think, uh, think about profits. And so you, you've actually – been able to launch as a corporation that that does what I've been preaching. <laughs> so I, I'm yeah, exactly. I'm glad we gave I mean, that, that's right. You know, the, um, um, yeah, I, I, the, oh, okay. go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, you hit it on the spot. I mean, uh, again, where we looked at the nonprofit and the corporate, a lot of what we do is not just connecting these different entities out there that are doing good, but we want to support them. We want to do a lot of uh, programs and and, and projects that help support and build the community. And to do that, uh, we looked at uh, the profit model and helping us uh, achieve that mission. So that's why we went that route. Absolutely. So uh, I think if anyone, you know, has more questions about benefit corporations, always feel free. You can contact me or or go on our website and and see different structures and things like that. So you've created a benefit corporation. And and we're going to talk more about what is One World CGI. But first, what what does CGI actually stand for? I think people want to know. (laughs) <laughs> CGI is essentially uh, the acronym for our uh, slogan or what we really believe in, which is create, give, and inspire. Uh, creating good, creating projects that help society, creating things that inspire others, giving your time, giving your passion to the cause of that you love, inspiring others with what you do. I mean, all these terms can uh, sort of go and fit with each other or represent different meanings to each person. But we felt that those three words really sort of capture the spirit of what we are trying to build here, which is promote philanthropy, promote goodwill, promote education, not just on a local or regional level, but on a global level. Because, uh, and I, I, don't, I didn't mention this before, but I relocated back to the United States recently. I had been traveling the world, and a lot of the times as I've traveled the world, I've helped out, I've been engaged in philanthropy or 
folks who are doing good things in the community, and I found that a lot of people are doing good things, but a lot, but it, it's been very disconnected. A lot of folks keep, mm-hmm. I've, I've heard this problem constantly, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in Thailand, whether it's in Hong Kong, where folks are asking for a place where they can all interact together so that they can communicate, they can engage in activities and, and find information that promotes something good. And I think a lot of times, as I've talked with a lot of nonprofits, a lot of these folks do a lot of good things, but oftentimes it's recreating the wheel. And I'm hoping that our platform as a global platform will allow people to share information, leverage resources so that they can engage in more good um, uh, without having to spend a lot of the resources getting up to that point to doing it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and that's, that's key because – there are so many nonprofits out there, and unfortunately, about 80% are under 500,000 yearly revenue. So that means they're tiny, small nonprofits that are generally struggling, just trying to survive. And many of mm-hmm. them sort of overlook the whole marketing concept of what they're doing. They're so focused on just trying to do the day-to-day programming that they do that they don't think about how important it is to for them to build uh, a community around and beyond what their programming is. And I think your platform really not only promotes that, but it is the flagship of how to bring the bigger masses to a smaller community. And I, I might not be explaining it very well. Oh, no, you definitely, I, you definitely uh, <laughs> said it well. I, and I think at this point, folks might be wondering, so what exactly is One World CGI? Um, and One World CGI is essentially, we operate a full, st- full service, one-stop social media and networking platform that promotes a positive community. On a global scale, we support people and organizations engaged in promoting philanthropy, education, and goodwill. One World CGI offers an abundance of technology to really help nonprofits, help community groups, help a lot of these smaller organizations get up to speed without having to dedicate a lot of the resources that they may not have, or if they have it, it may not be the most, I guess, productive use of the resources. Uh, And as I mentioned, prior to actually building the site, we spent about two years in the marketing and research areas, working with nonprofits, businesses, community groups, all these different entities. And one of the common things I just kept hearing over and over, and even recently as I've gone out to the community and talked to nonprofits, where they spend tremendous amounts of money on websites and other related technologies, but unfortunately these websites, they look amazing, but they don't generate any web traffic or very minimal web traffic. It's sort of like the tree in the wood that fell. No one really hears it and no one really sees these websites. And a lot of these nonprofits have a tremendous difficulty in, in, in gaining web traffic. Social media has, for the most part, been their, I think, their default go-to. But at the same time, yeah. the problem with social media that I've seen and which I've heard from the nonprofits is that there are so many out there right now where it's become challenging on resources where they have to dedicate a person or two to address all these different social media platforms. And it's not just copying and pasting one message onto every other platform because the audiences are different. So a lot of times they're having to retarget the message, rewrite the message. Mm-hmm. And so you can imagine it takes a lot of time. With One World CGI, what we're trying to be is that hub for philanthropy, hub for goodwill, so that people Absolutely. who are wanting to do something <laughs> good can come to one place and the organizations themselves can focus on one platform. And a lot of people might ask, well, how is that any different than a normal social media platform such as Facebook or Meetup or some of these other ones that are out there? Uh, One World CGI differs in the sense that we're not just about connecting. We also, again, feature an abundance of technology on there to really help the nonprofits, such as you can build websites, you can have communication, there's the social media, there's the social networking, there's communication tools, all these things to really help unite the sector, unite people and organizations that are doing good. And and our, our platform, again, it's not just offering these features, but we're also trying to take a more proactive approach in promoting the good that people are doing. We want to Absolutely. highlight the uh, good that they are doing on our website, and we have a couple of features on there that you can 
see not just your local community, but on a global scale, what are people doing out there so that you can get that best practice information, that knowledge. And if that inspires you to do something in your neighborhood, at least you don't have to do it all over again. You have somebody that's pointing you in the right direction. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to take our first commercial break uh, and then come back because I really want to dig deep uh, because I've been on the uh, the platform and, and set up our account. And so I want to go in and, and sort of dig deep into some of the features uh, of, of the site and, and really who should be using it. We'll be back in just a moment. The Philanthropeneur Foundation. Build your capacity with our educational programs and professional services. Learn how to be a philanthropeneur. Maximize your social impact and maximize your revenue. Visit thephilanthropeneur.com or philanthropeneurfoundation.org to find services, resources, and training to launch, enhance, or improve your business or nonprofit strategy. While there, sign up to receive the Philanthropeneur Journal digital publication. Today's Philanthropeneur Show tip. Yes, every show we try to give a, just a little tip of how to make your organization more effective and efficient. Just one tip. We just heard the promotion for the Philanthropeneur Journal. The next issue comes out April 15th. That's just in a few days. So make sure you go to the Philanthropeneur website or to jumegs.com, Philanthropeneur, and get your free subscription. But today, I love that One World CGI is based on building community. So my tip for everyone today, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, and businesses, make it a goal to build at least one partnership or collaboration over the next seven days. I don't know what that will look for you, but think collaboration versus competition. The benefits will be immeasurable. Then send me a message on what you created. I'd love to hear your story, and you might be picked to be featured on our next show. The Philanthropeneur Journal, a quarterly digital publication reaching over 600,000 entrepreneurs and nonprofits. Get targeted exposure to reach your ideal customer with our unique Ads for a Cause, where 50% of the fee goes to support our nonprofit training and services programs. Together, we can make a difference, create impact, and build capacity. Visit thephilanthropeneur.com, marketing ads tab for all the details. Mention this show and get a 10% discount. Okay, welcome back as we continue our conversation with Frank Hall, CEO and founder of One World CGI. Okay, like I said before, I've been on your website and I registered the Philanthropeneur Foundation. And, I mean, what's so exciting, your services really cover I mean, all aspects of what a nonprofit needs. But I'd also like to point out that businesses, entrepreneurs, individuals, you need to go onto the website and register also because it's, it's multifaceted uh, in terms of what the type of services. For example, you have that whole volunteer, like, like you mentioned, if someone wants to volunteer, they should go on the website. So let's dig a little bit deeper into some of the, I guess, actual services and, and um, benefits of the websites for connecting the nonprofit sector to the for-profit government individuals and, and uh, other people that might be looking for serving. Yeah, uh, during our development stage, we really listened to the users that we were intending to uh, have on this platform. Again, these users include nonprofits, community groups, faith-based groups, businesses, volunteers, education, health, whoever it may be that had some intention to do something positive. This is our sort of target audience. It sounds very broad, but at the same time, for us, we found that the commonality in wanting to do something good was a unifying factor that actually has made it very easy to really connect folks. Um, there's a little bit of thing on our platform for everybody. From the volunteer perspective, we really were trying to address the difficulties, the barriers that exist for volunteers to find things in this community to do. And not just for volunteers, but for the nonprofits and all these other entities. A lot of times, 
there are so many people, so many organizations that are doing a lot of good in the community, but people don't know what's going on. People don't even know what other organizations are going on. So our platform features a variety of ways to really connect and help the folks discover what's happening in their communities. We tie folks together or we connect folks together through various topics of interest. When you join up, you'll see that there are nine main ones. But after you sign up, there are in your settings a host of other interests that really help you find what you're interested in. We also have a map-based feature using geolocation, which means you plug in your address. You can see all the organizations and activities in the area based off of your interest. So it's really helpful in terms of help, allowing people to find things that they're interested in and allowing people to engage in their community. I think for too often now when you look at our modern day media and what we're being told, it seems like communities have just become about entertainment and food. But there again are so <laughs> many good things that people are doing in the community. And at One World CGI, I really, we're really trying to stress or, or uh, promote those stories, promote the things that are happening in the community, not just from the nonprofit side, but from the business side. Oftentimes, too many businesses are, uh, or oftentimes a lot of businesses are engaged in a lot of good things in the community, whether through donations or whether through sending their staff out to volunteer. But often they do not tell that story. Maybe it, can, maybe it comes out in one press release or it exists on the website in a, in a link that for the most part no one really looks at. We're really trying to help these businesses share their story because what I've found is, as I've worked with both the nonprofit sector and the business sector, a lot of times these stories build synergy. Uh, just for example, when we were working with uh, the Ronald McDonald House down in Orange County, California and the business leaders out there, one of the inspiring stories I heard heard was from a executive from one uh, a financial institution mentioning he was part of the Ronald McDonald House that inspired his peer from other organizations to get involved too. A lot of times folks may feel that this may be uh, promoting themselves, but at the same time, uh, or contrary to that uh, uh, position, it's really helping to promote a positive energetic community. And that's what we're really striving for, really looking to promote here. Because once somebody sees that somebody else is doing something good, it, it generally inspires others to follow suit as well. So we're really trying to, again, connect folks and help folks discover what's in the community so that they can develop new partnerships, collaborate, leverage on resources. I love what you said earlier where you're asking folks to collaborate with one other organization because that's what we feel is key nowadays. It's not about the competition or protecting your territory. I feel that in this world where there's so many folks doing good that even more good can be done if people collaborated and worked together. And the main problem thus far from what I can tell is, is just that the sector itself has been it's very disconnected. No one has really taken the effort to really, really connect it. Of course, there, there are some of these local and regional connections, but we're really trying to, again, connect folks at a larger scale and in an effective way. It's not about having to attend a conference. You can just go online, find what's in your community at ease at your convenience. And our site features an abundance of features that include technology such as building websites. We have social media components so that the philanthropy can be a little bit more fun. If people attend events, they can share it with their friends. We have a lot of different advanced communication features on our site that allows folks to instantaneously connect with each other, people with people, people with organizations. We also have communication features that allow for collaboration as we work with some of these businesses who are these top-down structures as well as nonprofits where they sort of work from the headquarters to the local level, we have these features that help uh, organizations collaborate. We have uh, features that, such as the map-based geolocation features to help folks discover what's happening in the community. Uh, many other features. You can create activities, projects, events, services. You can take donations. For the donations, we do not touch that. That Donations are strictly between the contributor and the nonprofit, so all tax exemption statuses are retained. You can do crowdfunding on the site. And crowdfunding was developed for more transparency in case some uh, a donator might feel a little apprehensive for of donating straight to the nonprofit maybe uh, the nonprofit or uh, the community group may want to create a specific event so that it can provide more transparency for the uh, donor so that they can see where their money is going to we have the ability to uh, post news stories, share your information, um, a lot of different features. And we have a various uh, advanced search options on the site to, again, and really help folks discover what they are looking for and for them then to be engaged in the community. 
And that's sort Absolutely. of where I mean, the first, yes. Well, you have not, I, I'm on your site right now. Uh, yeah, I, I tend to drift around. Um, and, and you <laughs> actually have nine different categories that, I mean, I went and explored, <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, all of them. And, and one that really caught my attention because we at the Philanthropy Foundation, we give an annual conference and we've attracted people from around the world uh, to the conference is that you, you can put events and, and um, your platform is a global platform. And so once it goes up there, people from around the world can really find what you're doing. And, and then also the exciting part with, like you just mentioned, the whole crowdfunding and donate capacities. Many nonprofits, as you said, when they're starting out, they spend all of this money on a website. Now, where we're not saying that they should not have a website, but they don't have to pay, well, I, they don't need to invest thousands and thousands of dollars in a website. Their website, yes, people are going to look for them through there, but it just needs to tell their story. But to be socially engaged, they need to attach or link One World to their website to really um, provide the services that a what I would call a premier website would do for them. You've put it all together for them already, the, the capacity to donate and, and everything. So by adding your enhancement to their existing website w would really be an advantage for them. D did you think of that or was that a part of the plan when uh, you evolved and, and created One World? Um. Well, definitely. Uh, well, let me answer your question because there were several parts there. Uh, just the first part. Um, <laughs> I came to do global. that. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, this was a really great question, Dr. Boyd. Uh, the first segment in terms of the donation, One World CGI is a global platform. Our, uh, the only limitation at this time is that the payment uh, system that we use, which is a company called Stripe, they are uh, organizations for Many countries can sign up and use it, but I don't believe it is a, is a fully global platform because I know there are limitations in Asia, but for Europe, for United States, Australia, a couple, many other countries, uh, organizations can sign up and use the site fully. At this time, we are also currently looking to implement uh, or integrate PayPal or a couple of other um, payment services that will expand the reach of One World CGI, so that's in the works. But for the most part, uh, Everything else is available to audiences throughout the world. In terms of uh, the second part of your question of websites, um, and I think I mentioned this early, I mean, when we were speaking with nonprofits, one of the things that I just kept hearing with nonprofits, they spent a lot of money on technology, and oftentimes it just did not result in any traffic. And again, mm -hmm. and you, you mentioned, you brought up a good point. We're not saying that you should not have a website. If you have the resources, by, by all means, go ahead. But what we're trying to do at One World CGI is help smaller uh, or smaller organizations that may not have that resource or have that resource, but that could be used in a better way. We would like you to use that in, that, in your goal, in your primary mission, and maybe offset uh, the, the cost of technology at this, be at this point in time so that you can get up uh, and, and really take off. And our platform, uh, we have a website editor up there so that you can create a website that is external to the One World CGI site, meaning that you can you put it on a business card. People can go to the website. They do not have to log into the One World CGI platform and view some of the information that's on there, such as make donations, do other things that are on that website. But at this time, the website editor is basic because that's what it's, – it's basic in terms of – it's easily used. One of the key factors we heard from a lot of the nonprofits that we worked with was that they wanted this system to be easily managed, easily maintained. Uh, we had a lot of different interfaces and variations as we developed this, and uh, it looked a lot more bodied a lot uh, way back because a lot of folks asked us, again, simplicity, make it easy to use. So that's what we are striving for. And in terms of the website editor, uh, it's really we have seven templates. You can just change each template, which is the, the home page feature. And then uh, it's simply just plugging in uh, text and plugging in pictures to really just 
uh, change the website. It's very easy to use. Um, in the long term, we do look, we are looking forward to um, advancing the website editor for folks who really want to customize things on that website. So, we, so the website editor is a pro, is a feature that will be continually uh, advanced um, as we move forward. Uh, we look to implement uh, many other features, including email, all these other things that um, nonprofits um, they have a huge list of uh, desires that nonprofits have asked mm-hmm. us for. So you know, we're getting a um, we're checking those off one by one. Um, but yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, again, One World CGI, it's not just about connecting folks. We're really here to help you guys achieve your mission. And uh, from whether it's a nonprofit or a business, uh, we listen to our target audience and we want to help. I think people would, because we're, you're talking about ongoing development. I, I, uh, we jumped right over this and never even really mentioned that you just launched in January, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, you're you brought up a good point. <laughs> that we are a totally new uh, platform that's uh, available online, and we are slowly building our community. Um, we launched it about January and did a very slow rollout as we look to also uh, uh, correct some of the technical difficulties that are part of any large project such as this. Um, most the, And uh, after that period now, we're looking to really market ourselves in a greater way to, so that folks can benefit from using this platform. Uh, we uh, We've uh, spoken with a lot of great nonprofits and had uh, several wonderful uh, nonprofits join up, such as the uh, McDo- uh, such as the Ronald McDonald Houses, the Philanthropeneur Foundation, uh, several community groups uh, here in Las Vegas. We have the Las Vegas Rescue Mission that also joined up, and we're also bringing in businesses as well. So that again, we're we're really trying to facilitate the strategic partnership so that organizations um, can find or nonprofits can find businesses, businesses can find nonprofits. What I mean by that is that. A lot of times in this community, uh, in this sector, it, it's very relational based where somebody needs to know someone to really make that relationship work. What we're trying to do differently is also just provide that information online. So, for example, if a nonprofit had a uh, event or an activity and they needed support, they can you know, showcase that event and activity and a business may be able just to find it really quickly. And if they see that that activity has a lot of support from the community, um, we have the like features. We have these types of similar metrics so that people can see what's popular or what mm-hmm. what has support. Uh, the businesses might be more incentivized to donate their money there, to send their volunteers there instead of always sort of relying on the same uh, traditional routes that they have uh, maybe gone to. And this, and I've heard some concern where folks are like, well, there's only so much money to go around or so many resources to go around. And I don't think that's necessarily true because a lot of times I think the biggest problem of what, what has been uh, verified by a lot of these nonprofits and businesses is that First, you just can't find what's out there. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. So by connecting folks, the opportunities are just so much greater. And what we're really striving for is changing the, 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 the belief that people are one-dimensional. People are more interested in just helping one organization. People have the ability and the desire to be part of a many things. And if nonprofits jump on board and bring their members on board, it, it can create a huge community where uh, folks from different uh, from other organizations who maybe volunteer or donate there, they may see your cause as well and want to help out. Um, I'm, you know, when we looked at it, we also researched and really delved into the mind of folks who really wanted to help out. And that psychology of a person who wants to help out and a person that doesn't, it's vastly different. Um, the folks we find that want to help out, at, they begin with a motivation when they are inspired to help. And once mm-hmm. you bring them into the fold, once you break down these barriers and help them be engaged, uh, they tend to uh, be engaged for life. It, it becomes a core part of their life. Um, but at the same time, if you provide the, or you restrict them by having these barriers, um, just for example, one of my volunteers recently just informed me that a uh, nonprofit she had emailed finally emailed her back saying that they did not have any volunteer opportunities three months after she emailed. That is not a good way right. to inspire it, it is not folks good business. who want to help you out. Right. So it, it we're really, again, trying to connect. Yes. Absolutely. And, and, and one, yeah, one of your great features that um, it, it is that volunteer platform. In fact, I was just talking to a, a, a group that I just learned about uh, last week called, uh, I think it's Just One Project. 
And and their whole premise and their brand new nonprofit is providing volunteers to other nonprofits. And I think the whole uh, that's once again how I was drawn to One World CGI is the Philanthropy uh, Foundation and my vision. I have been teaching nonprofit management for years, and and I kept getting requests. Well, you know, could you be on our board? Could you do this? But I wasn't interested in just one nonprofit. I wanted to see the entire sector grow. And so, like you said, many people are multifaceted or or have or multidimensional and have many interests. And so, having a platform where the work that an individual, a business, or a group does to contribute to the world can touch and be of value to many organizations is is of so much value and and it really is what uh, in the bigger picture is needed. Yes, we still have our individual what we call passion points where you know I love the arts and things like that. But on a larger scale, I want to see all nonprofits thrive and I'm sure that's what CGI also wants to see they want to see, you want to see the world you know be a better place by providing access to um, some of these uh, great I mean you just need to go on the site and explore that's all, that's a, I guess pretty much all I can say because I've gone through every page and uh, I loved it that I was coming in when it was brand new and, and launching, and I was able to send a, a, a direct request and say, you know, this isn't quite working for me right yet. Is there a glitch or something? And it was fixed like right away, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so that was exciting. But I think some of our listeners might be wondering, is there a cost to this? And, and what is the projection on that? I know the answer, but I'll let you answer that. <laughs> Definitely. Well, first of all, I just realized that I never even mentioned our website, but you can access One World CGI at www.oneworldcgi.com, and it's all spelled out. In um, terms of the cost, this whole year as we launch, we're looking, this is just a free platform. Anybody can join up. Uh, for from now until eternity, the, when you sign up, membership will always be free. Where we're looking to... Uh, put in our price structure at a later time. At uh, minimum, it will probably be a next year or longer, depending on where we, how we want to grow the community. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, essentially a subscription model, something small, um, $30, $40 a month, something along those lines. Uh, we're not here to nickel and dime the folks who use our platform. I want to make this operation sustainable so that we can have, uh, so that we can generate profits, so that we can reinvest it into some of these programs and uh, and and projects that I mentioned earlier that help out the members of our community. But at the end point, where our, my goal here is to make this just a sustainable company that helps our members. And we're not here to be an advertising machine or some giant uh, uh, corporate behemoth here. Uh, we're here really to facilitate good in this world. Um, so for this whole year, everything is free. The only uh, feature right now that we charge for is the crowdfunding option, which we uh, charge 2% on, and uh, our payment provider Stripe, I believe, charges 3% on. So that's a total of 5%, which is still less than every other kind of crowdfunding platform out there, I believe. Um, but for the most part, if you don't need the crowdfunding, if, uh, you can use, again, straight direct donation. Um, everything else is free to use on the site. And we're looking for more partners to, uh, or more organizations and to partner with us and, and help out, um, help each other out. Absolutely. So uh, let's say someone is on there and they're signing up. Um, it, it has all of these great features, um, and most nonprofits, especially those that I talk to, they always are asking, uh, how is the help desk? I'll call it a help desk. Uh, how have you um, let that evolve, your help desk? Um, I'm sorry, could you be a little... Uh, well, okay, so just for example, I, I because I knew you directly, I had your direct email. So I could. <laughs> Correct. But if I had had a question about setting it up, because when I was on there, I, you know, I, I, I was exploring and, and how to set up certain things. I, I did want to ask questions. Is your, I uh, definitely most understand. Pe- 
Yep. <laughs> so to answer that question, uh, once you sign up afterwards, if you go to the upper right corner, you'll see the settings icon. If you go in the settings icon, the last link says report a problem. Once you click report a problem, there are several uh, available options uh, that you might have a question or a problem with, such as your account, uh, if, if it's technical or website related, if it's uh, or just a general issue, any kind of a, a comment you might have, you can just enter the information there and submit it, and uh, somebody will be in touch with you shortly. Yeah, uh, and the reason I brought it up is because when I – uh, talk to a lot of nonprofits, you know, they're coming with a passion and a vision and they don't mm -hmm. necessarily come with a lot of technical skills and, and they get scared when I said, well, we can set up your website and then you can manage it. And they were, oh, what do you mean manage it? What, what do I have? To, and, and it's almost as if they put up a wall of telling themselves, well, I just can't, I'm, I'm not technical. I can't do that. But you've created a platform that you don't need to be techie. You know, it's it's Correct. it's it's Correct. very simple, and they can have all of the features that they see everyone else having with just a few clicks of the button. And if they do have a question, there's always someone there to support them. That's I guess that's the whole point of me bringing up that Correct. whole help desk. <laughs> Oh, no, and that's definitely, uh, and I, as I mentioned earlier, we really listen to uh, the folks that we talk to that helped really inspire us to create this website. Um, simplicity, ease of use, and we definitely understood that in a lot of nonprofits, especially the smaller ones, they do not have the technical expertise on board to really help manage a large, complicated website. So we try to make this as simple as possible from a user standpoint. Um, and also in the settings, I just wanted to add, in the Help and Facts section also addresses a lot of uh, some common questions about the features on that Help and Facts. But if you can't get your concerns addressed, again, feel free to uh, send us a comment. We're really looking for comment. I love comment because it helps us grow. It helps us figure out what works for you guys, the nonprofits, the business, all the different folks out there. So please send us information if uh, don't hesitate. Um, Absolutely. Great. I mean, I got I, – I guess I can't say enough about how excited I got when I saw the platform and what it was trying to accomplish, that it was, you know, really – in alignment with, with the philanthropic goal and goals and philosophy. So, as a wrap up to uh, your time on our show, just sort of tell our um, your biggest advice, and it might not even be related to One World, but uh, in your travels, your biggest advice and um, why nonprofits might sign up with One World CGI. This is your marketing time. Give the website again and, and all of the details. <laughs> well, again, One World CGI is a full-service, one-stop social media networking platform that promotes uh, philanthropy, education, goodwill globally. Uh, we're more than just a product out on that's available online. We're also about supporting the organizations that join as members. Our mission is to really help promote global philanthropy, and that's helping the nonprofits, helping the businesses, helping all those folks who are engaged in the community do this with ease. We're really looking to connect folks. Hopefully, you guys can find new relationships, develop new partnerships, collaborate, and do a lot more good. All the services, again, are free to use other than the crowdfunding, which we charge 2%, but for the most part, most people will probably not use that, <laughs> um, and that's yeah. we need to. But everything else, you know, we we really listen to the different challenges that this sector faces in terms of getting connected, in terms of ha having technology that works for them, that's manageable, that's not ex excessively uh, uh, cost prohibitive. We want to help you uh, achieve your mission in terms of, uh, and we do that by offering all this technology to you. Um, at relatively low free cost, um, and hopefully your organization can get up on its feet and, and make a lot of good in this world and do a lot of good in this world. And uh, you know, that's our goal. That's our mission. Um, okay. So I wanted to encourage everyone to go visit www one that's o n e world w o r l d c g i dot com today. Go <laughs> become a part of that community. It's, I mean, it, it, why not? It's free, and the more people we have on the site, the more robust and we'll be building social capital, and everybody will gain from the whole experience. 
Frank, I want to really thank you for being on the show. I, I realize you were sick, but you you charged through it. You powered through it. <laughs> and and uh, I hope to have you back on the show in the future again. And I know I'll be seeing you because it, everyone in the Las Vegas area on May 10th, I want to invite you to a workshop that the Philanthropeneur will be presenting in partnership with United Way of Southern Nevada. And we'll be presenting Frank Hong, CEO and founder of One World CGR, CGI. And he will present a uh two and a half hour workshop on how to set up all of the features. In fact, bring your laptop if you have uh, internet con connectivity, but he will be there to walk you through the entire website and all of its services. And it's at the United Way offices from 9 to 1130 in the morning. If you want to sign up to it, go to the Philanthropeneur uh, website calendar and you can sign up. Go do that today because spaces are limited. Thank you, Frank, and I will see you on May 10th, if not before. I really appreciate you coming again, on the show thank today. Thank you, Dr. Boyd, for this invitation, and it was my pleasure to be on your show, and I look forward to speaking with your audience again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Okay, the Philanthropeneur Heart Foundation works hard every day to build capacity through education and professional services. We see their challenges and meet the needs of not one, but hundreds of organizations. Help us help nonprofits, a vital asset in every community. Please support our programs and let us be of benefit to you. Sponsorship opportunities and ads for a cause, we can help you reach your target audience with global exposures. Opportunities for print ads or radio spots, sponsorships of monthly or annual conferences. Or for pennies a day, join our 5 and 10 campaign. Make a tax-deductible donation today. Learn more about all of these opportunities by visiting philanthropeneurfoundation.org. Look for the support or sponsor tabs. Or contact me directly at vboyd at pcclv.org. Join us for our next show when we welcome Sally Anderson all the way from New Zealand, and she'll be talking about her great event she's bringing to Las Vegas called Evolve Leadership, and that will be on April 20th. In the meantime, we ask, are you a philanthropist? Thank you for tuning in to the Philanthropist Radio Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd. Get involved. Follow us on Facebook and other social media outlets. If you wish to share comments or suggestions or appear as a guest on our show, visit www.thephilanthropeneur.com. Contact Victoria Boyd. Email her at thboyd at thephilanthropeneur.com. The Philanthropeneur Radio Show is a production of and sponsored by the Philanthropeneur Foundation, a 501c3 tax-deductible organization.